And others, it says in verse 38, it says, as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. Now, now, none of these things are wrong in themselves, of course. We have to eat and drink and marry and give in marriage, but the, the concept is, I just want to enjoy a bit of what life has to offer. This project is so otherworldly. I'm just not ready for it yet. I'm just not ready for the commitment it involves. Like, I, I have things I want to eat. I have things, uh, places I want to go. I have, uh, I mean, I, I want to get married. I want a relationship. I, 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 have, I have people I want to meet. I have, I have an agenda. And, and, and if I opt into this work, it, it seems that another agenda takes over mine. And I'm really not ready for this yet. I may, maybe sometime in the future. Maybe when I get old like Pastor Carter, maybe that will be all right. Then, you know, life is past, basically, and maybe I'll just, I'll just get involved then. I mean, I'm young. I, I'm, I'm in my 20s. I, I've got a career ahead of me. i got life ahead of me. i I got things I want to do, places I want to go. And, and yet I, I have a sense that if I, if I give my life to this call and this cause then I, I'm going to be, somebody else is going to be leading me, and, and the, the cause is going to be different than the one I think for my life. And, and I'm, 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 no, we're not ready yet. You know, you've been at this a long time. It took him many, many years, dozens and dozens and dozens of years to build this thing, and they're passing by, maybe from the time that they're kids in some case, and say, well, you know, just give it a bit of time. We'll, we, we'll be here. You can count on us. We, we have just a little bit more we want to do. And others passing by were just outright mockers who would have said, oh, this is extreme. But if this unusual rain actually starts that you're talking about, we'll, we'll come and give you a hand. We know where you are. And so when the time comes, you're talking about judgment. Well, when judgment comes, we, we'll come. We'll, we'll get in. We'll count me in. We'll come and give you a hand. Verse 39 says, they didn't know until the flood came and took them all away. And so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Genesis chapter 7 tells us, in the day that the rain started, in the self-same day, the scripture says, God, Noah, and his family, and everything he had prepared for went into the ark, and it says, God shut them in, the day the rain started. Now how sad it must have been for Noah to hear those voices from the other side of the closed door. I want you to think about it for a moment. As Noah is inside the ark, and there goes that, there goes that mom with those two little kids, and there goes. It's not that God is unjust, folks. The invitation was there for dozens of years, but the invitation was turned down for various reasons. It was rejected for things that even looked good, and then suddenly, from within the ark. Noah is, is hearing these pleas. There had to be people arriving. The mockers suddenly weren't mocking anymore. The, the people who thought that this life had something better than what God was offering them were banging on the outside of the door, finally realizing that it was all going to be underwater in just a moment of time. Others that were afraid because society was going to laugh at them were no longer afraid anymore. And they were knocking on the door and trying to get in but the door was closed. And the scripture tells us in chapter 25, the kingdom of heaven, he said, is like those who went forth to meet the bridegroom, and there, was, there were those who simply had no oil. They had no relationship. They had no light. They had no ability to see. They couldn't find their way as it is into life. And they went to those who had oil, and they said, give us of your oil. And those who had oil told them, no, we can't. You've got to go and get it for yourself. This is not, you have to, you have, to have a living relationship with God. You, it, this is not a formula, folks. This is a relationship. This, this is something where we give our lives to God. We acknowledge that God became a man, went to a cross, paid the price for our sins, opened wide his arms to those who had come to him and invited us into this ark of safety, which is his own life. It was his own sacrifice on the cross, invited us into eternal life. It's not a formula. I can't lay hands on you for to get this thing. I can't impart it to you because it's not mine to give. You have to get it for yourself. Running to church in the day of calamity won't do a thing for you. Church can't do anything for you. It's a living relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. 
The scripture says, well, they went to buy. The bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. And afterwards the others came, saying, Lord, open to us. But he said, I'm sorry. I don't know who you are. Folks, it's a dangerous thing to hear the gospel and to put it away from you. It's the worst decision you can make in your entire life. And I say it to you with a loving heart tonight. As much as I know how, how tragic it will be. I want you to think for a moment that if Christ did come tomorrow, and you were among those who found yourself outside of the kingdom of God, what will make hell really hell is the memory of my voice tonight. The invitation that was given to you to come into the safety that God offers through Jesus Christ, but for some reason that was just about to pass away, it was all going to come to nothing anyway, you rejected the greatest decision, the greatest life, the greatest offer of love and forgiveness that could ever have come your way through all of time or eternity. And you sold it off for a little bit of relationship, a little bit of, of, of a sense of what you think your life should be, a little bit of laughter, a little bit of fear of man. You sold it off. The greatest opportunity, the greatest life that has ever been given. How sad it will be for me to hear your voice. If it is such that for a moment in time, for just a moment I can hear you, and maybe you sat under the sound of my voice tonight or some other time, and you just put it away for another day. But on the outside, I can hear you trying to get in, and you can't find your way into the kingdom of God. Because as I said earlier, it's not a formula. And God is not a light switch that you just flip on and off at your convenience. When the offer comes, and your heart is warmed, listen, we're talking about eternity now in heaven. We're talking about being saved from being separated from God for all of eternity. And whatever that is going to mean, the depths of it, our minds can't even begin to understand. We're talking about being redeemed from being separated from the God who created you in His image and is destined for you and I to live with Him for all of eternity. We're talking about putting that day away. And how sad that day is going to be. How heartbreaking it will be for some to be knocking on a door and you can't find your way in. Verse 40 says, two will be in the field, one is taken, the other is left. Two are grinding at the mill, one is taken and the other is left. One has already been received. One has already accepted the offer. One is already moving by the voice of God into that place of safety and the other is left. Watch, therefore. He says, you don't know the hour your Lord is going to come. But know this. If you would have known in what time the thief would come, you would not have let your house be broken into. You would not have worked your whole life for things that you can't keep. You would not have spent your time on that which is not eternal. But you would have given your life to Jesus Christ. I don't know how I can convey more to you the urgency of the hour that we are living in. You and I don't have, you don't have forever to make this decision. What must I do, you say, to get into the ark? Admit that you are a sinner. Admit that you have sinned against a holy God. Admit that your life is not what it should be. And admit that you need a Savior. And recognize that God in His love came to the earth in the form of a man. His name was Jesus Christ. And He came here because He loved you. He came here because He wanted you. He came here because He was impassioned about getting you back to Himself again. And because of that, He endured people spitting in His face and slapping Him and beating Him so He could get you back again. And he went to a cross and he died and shed every last drop of blood to pay the price for every wrong thing that you and I have ever done. And he says, all you have to do is open your heart and invite him to come in to be your Savior and your Lord. 
you receive the forgiveness that he offers and you give the rest of your life to him, whatever that means. But I've never heard in my lifetime a testimony of anybody who's ever regretted this decision. I've been around a long time. Though. Anybody who's ever truly come to Christ, I've never one time in my life heard somebody get into a pulpit and say, you know, I've regretted this decision from the day I made it. Not one time. And I've been in testimony meetings all over the world. Every time I hear it, it's the same thing. Thank God I made this decision. It has taken me to a place. It has taken me to a place I never could have gone on my own. The supernatural has opened to me and I've started to see the provision of God. This young lady talks tonight about making hundreds and thousands of dollars and living on a mattress and spending it all on booze and such like. And comes to our church and I know she doesn't make anywhere near what she talked about before. And now has a house. And now the bills are paid. And now she's out of debt. Now has a husband. Now has a child. I hear young people have given up their plans and their dreams. They've gone into, min into the schools of ministry. And God is beginning to get the reins of their life and leading them on a course where there's no fear of the future. But a certain anticipation that God is going to use their lives for good. And when it's all over, it's only beginning forever to be in the presence of God. There's an old saying that says, he is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep to get hold of what he can never lose. You are no fool, sir, to give up your fear of man, to give up your own plans, and to give up all of your thoughts of what life should be, to lay hold of what God says life is and where eternity is found. I challenge you with everything in my heart that tonight that you would surrender your life to Jesus Christ, that you would accept this offer of eternal life, that you would have the courage just to get up. You may not understand it all, but the courage just to get up and say, I have a witness in my heart that this is right. And I trust that tonight. I trust. I was speaking to Muslim soldiers after the war in Kosovo who've never heard this their whole life. They've been told everything but the truth of Jesus Christ. But I stood in front of that crowd and I said, you know that what I'm saying is true today because... God's Holy Spirit is telling your heart that this is right. And soldiers started to cry. And you know this is right. You know it. I don't have to say another thing. I don't have to go one more foot to convince you because there's something in your heart that knows this is right. But now is the moment of decision. Now is the moment where you have to make a decision. Now I've heard it said, somebody said to me one time, will God ever send a man to hell? I said, no, you choose to go there. It's your choice. He opened the way to heaven. No, it's your choice. I want to ask you tonight, in sincerity and in truth, if you know in your heart this is right, there's just something inside that says this is true, this is right, I'm not hearing a lie, this is not a, a sales pitch, this is real, this is life, this is eternal, this is God, this is forgiveness, this is why I was made. This is who God is. This is where I belong in the kingdom of God. I don't get it all, but I know it's right, and I'm moving towards it. And if that's in your heart tonight, if you want to take that first step and give your life to Jesus Christ, then I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And we're going to believe God that this is going to be the beginning of the life that God has for you in the days ahead. Come as you are. Come with your frailties. Come with your faults. Come with your flaws. Come with your struggles. Come as you are. The invitation for forgiveness is for all people. 